everyone can write this down. Periscope, you guys should take note of this. You, wherever you guys watch this, take note of this. Is that I have a video on my YouTube channel called Building Black Wealth. Right? Extremely good video. It's called Building Black Wealth. Right? In the video, I talk about when you buy multifamily properties, right? This means one to four units. Anything one to four units is considered residential real estate. Five or more units is considered commercial real estate. Five units or more commercial, one to four. Residential real estate. There's a small exception or asterisk to that. I guess we'll go up in here. And that's if you buy a multifamily, but it has a store attached, As long as your residential units are more than your store units, this is called mixed use residential. And you can actually buy this with 3.5% down as well through FHA or 3% down with certain banks. So you can buy one to four units or one to four units mixed used with anywhere from 3%, right now, current bank standards, to 3.5 guidelines, 3.5% down. This could change at any time. This is not law. This is bank guidelines. It can change next week. It can be lower or more. Nevertheless, you do what you got to do to fit in where you got to fit in. So, what I like about multifamilies, two big things. One, when you live in one side, you obviously can rent the other out, right? So, you get cash flow. Right? If you ever move out of that property, you get cash flow from both units. And if it's mixed use, you get cash up from the store as well, right? But the other thing I like about this is that if you are getting $1,000 in rent and you're living in this unit, and say you're making $30,000 a year, right? This is your income, $30,000 a year, $30K. And now you're making $1,000 in rent from the house you want to buy. The bank will give you 75% credit of this rent towards you qualifying. So that means the bank is saying, all right, you're going to get 1000 a month in rent, so we're going to add $750 more to your income per month times 12 per year. So nearly another $9,000 in income. So now when you qualify for your mortgage, they're not looking at you making 30, they're looking at you making 39 or whatever 75% of this is for a year. Same thing if this were a four unit, right? So now you'd have three other incomes. So now the bank's saying you're making 3,000 a month or 36,000 a year, 75% of that. About 27,000. So now if you were making 30 grand a year, the same 30 grand. But you were buying a fourplex, quadplex, four family, you'd now be getting credit for another 27 or so thousand dollars towards your income of qualifying. So now the bank is looking at units making 57,000. So having extra units helps you qualify and adds more income to your qualifying potential. Yes. So how do you determine what? These scenarios are determined by either the appraiser, by a current lease, or the, what's called the market rents. The market rents are provided to the bank by the licensed appraiser. Or if there's a current lease, they'll take a current lease on the property. So this is just another way that you can qualify. But the other thing, right, so you got two. Qualifying help. And then three, I said two, but it's really three, is the fact that when you buy this, right, and this one to four unit residential is also what's called owner occupied. This is not as an investor. This means the owner is going to live there. Right? And as a little proof outside of me and my story and the properties that I purchased like that, Silk, what'd you just do? I mean, property, but I, I, didn't, I didn't do the 3.5. I did the, the regular 5% because right. I didn't want to have to go through the trouble of um, PMI. Yeah. Right. So, Silk, our videographer, he followed the same strategy. 
You bought a multifamily or single? Single. You just bought a single family. Five percent down. We're strong. What are you doing right now? Huh? Buying a multifamily. How much down? 3.5% down in New Jersey. He bought one in what? VA? Yeah, VA. Yes. It's called the uh, conventional loan. Instead of the FHA loan, I just did a regular conventional loan. That's for your second. Um, that's for your second part. For your first, you get the five. Or, or three. Well, Queen, the issue is, the issue is you haven't sat with a mortgage broker. You need to sit with the right one then. Right. Because you have the option to go FHA or conventional. That's why I said it with multiple mortgage brokers so you get different perspectives on what your options are. It's like going to a doctor. One doctor tell you one thing, you might want to get a second opinion. And that's a lot of time we get, we get fed misinformation on our first go round and then it deters us or it just gets us in a whole different... I, I've been through that. That's why I'm telling you guys from experience is to try multiple people or have a mentor. So for him, he's been able to reach out to me and get different perspectives. Or Rashawn, he's my coaching client. So they're able to call me and get the game the right way. Instead of going out there guessing and hoping we get it right. That's why it's so important that we invest in mentorship, the training. But so these strategies are something that we live by and that we that we do, right? So the other dope part is that if you buy a multifamily owner occupied, right? I mean the owner's gonna live there. When you move out and go buy your next property, is that single family? You now can still rent all these units out. So now you're buying your single family, but you have all this income to help you qualify for your single family. So people are isn't that more debt? It's more debt, but it's more good debt because now you've turned this into a full asset. And not to mention, remember we said properties go up in value. So now you got the appreciation of the property going up in value. You got the cash flow from the units. You got the tax benefits from the units. But now you got another property in which will go up in value. And now these rents are paying your mortgage living for free while you get tax benefits from this property. And then you recycle and play the game. That's why I teach in the Building Black Wealth lecture online. You can see exactly how, how this is played. So you can go into it with a full strategy. This is basic home ownership 101. If you purchase the right way and using our strategies, these properties you buy, you'll buy them already with equity. Right? So, as a quick little definition for us. Equity. Equity is the difference between what you owe on a property, say you owe 30 grand, you owe 30K, right to the bank. But the property is worth, it's valued at, 70 grand. Equity is the difference between what you owe and what it's worth. So how much equity is in this property? Somebody. $40,000 in equity, right? All right, so if you bought the house cash or paid your mortgage off and now you owe the bank zero, how much equity in the property? 70,000. Very simple. Equity is different what you owe and what a property's worth. But what equity allows you to do when you know what you're doing is that when you own a property, multifamily, single, whatever it is, and you've gained some equity from either, you can buy a property with equity. If you buy right, you buy a discounted property, you can then create some equity or buy it with equity then you can leverage this equity through a refinance or other methods and you can tap into some of this cash to use for other investments or businesses or children's school, vacations, whatever property is another benefit to why we own. That increasing in value while you pay down your mortgage creates more equity, right? More family worth. And so that's a brief a, a preview, so to speak, of the home ownership side and now I want to give you guys a quick overview of real estate investing
So something we mentioned today, and I'll talk about tomorrow during our day with Jay Bootcamp. We talked about today doing our our uh, our fun. But something that we talked about was understanding what's called the opportunity cost of money, right? We all make money eventually, we save money, but it's all about what do we do with our money. So, we got our shoebox money, right? Money under your mattress, money in safety deposit box. You got 40 grand saved up. This money in a shoe box under your mattress, safe deposit box, does you no good because it gains you no interest on your money. It doesn't grow at all. Not to mention the cost of living, which is called inflation. The inflation average is 3% a year for the cost of living. So if, it, if the cost of living is 3% a year, it goes up to 3% a year, but your money is sitting getting 0% a year, you're actually losing 3% of your money every year. So your money has to earn at least 3% in order for your money to break even with itself. So we have our shoebox money. Then we have our traditional banks, right? We got our savings accounts. So again, the ROI in shoebox, zero. In our savings accounts, we got the same 40 grand. In a savings account, you're getting less than 1% interest usually. Usually you're getting like 0.1 something, 75%. I don't even know what that is. It's like lunch money, right? But this is where we have our money sitting sometimes. Then you got like your CDs, right? You got your CDs, your mutual funds. Save 40 grand. And now, if you lock your money up in a three year CD, you'll be about 3% interest. So that means you're getting $1,200 on your money every year. So you got 40 grand locked up in a CD or savings account, and you're getting $1,200 a year on your money. This is the opportunity cost of money. What's the next best thing that you can do with your money? This is something that we don't consider in our community. It's just understanding money a little better. So now we look at the opportunity that you can take that same 40 grand and maybe you put, say you wanna buy an $80,000 property. So you can, send, you can put a 20% down payment on an $80,000 property with the 16 grand. Purchase this property. This could be a multi-family or single. Even if it's a single family, and you're getting 800 a month in rent on a single family, which is 9,600 dollars a year, right? Times 12. You use 16,000 out of your 40 to buy this property, even with a even if you got a $500 mortgage on your property, which is $500 mortgage, taxes and insurance times 12, is $6,000 a year. So your profit for the year is $3,600. Even with one simple single family property, with a 20% down payment on $16,000, you tripled what you would have made in a CD of 40 grand of one simple investment. If this property was vacant half the year, you would make half of this. You would make $1,800 if this property was vacant half the year, you'd make $1,800. Still beats your CD. That's in one year. Not to mention appreciation of the property and the tax advantages. This is where we gotta start looking at real estate as our way out. Our way to building family wealth. And the dope part about it, as I was saying earlier, and for those of you who come to my boot camp tomorrow, you're gonna learn, I teach real estate 
from the perspective of being the boss of running a real estate company not being a mom and pop real estate wholesaler two big crumb snatcher house flipper it's not how i teach it it's not how i do real estate i gotta teach you how i do it i don't run around the country walking through properties evaluating deals spending all my time i don't do that why do i gotta do that for there's people that do that for a living so i hire them i believe in being an expert at hiring experts i call my mortgage guy when i need deals or inventory i call my realtor when I got a legal problem, I don't ask my cousin Joe. I don't ask Raheem. I don't ask Bay. When I got a legal problem, I call my attorney. It's one of the biggest things I see happening in our community. We ask our homeboy or our homegirl, our king, our queen, or whoever, an accounting question. And they barely made it out of junior college. Leverage the experts. So what I do when I teach my students is you first build your company, you build your brand, then you build your team. Then you can like, that, that, this property I showed you, many of you are like, yeah, I guarantee you. And I want to see a show of hands. If your thought when I brought up this one property, you had some kind of anxiety or thought about who's going to manage it. Or about tenants or about vacancies. Anybody. One. One honest one. Two. Three. What we got to realize is that when you look at it from being the boss, you don't got to manage the properties. That's what they have property managers for. That's one of our biggest headaches. Oh, I don't want to deal with no tenants. I don't want to be no landlord. Who said you're not be the landlord? Be the landowner. So I was looking at it from a higher perspective. So I want to break down four ways. So we talked about home ownership, right? This is one way you build wealth through real estate, right? That's one way. One of the other ways that we're going to elaborate on tomorrow when we teach in our academy and our students having a lot of success is what's called wholesaling real estate, flipping contracts. And so this model is really easy and it fits right into our corner class. It's no different than in the streets or anything else or being a teacher industry. Here's you. You're trying to figure out how to get on your feet, how to make more money, build more capital. When you learn how to be an investor who wholesales, not a wholesaler, but an investor that wholesales or an investor wholesaler, when you learn how to do this model, this is that, you know how you guys hear the whole, that whole saying, how to make money in real estate with no cash, no credit? Well, here's how you do it. The model is very simple. There's two kind of ways you can make money in real estate with no cash or credit of your own. I'm gonna give you two. One is you wholesale the real estate. That model is very simple. You establish your business, well, the way I teach it anyway. You establish your business and brand presence, you learn how to evaluate deals. You get leads on deals. You then go in and contract properties. When you contract the property, you then have the purchase rights to the property. Exclusive purchase rights, no one can buy it but you. And now, at the same time in your business, you're finding investors, people with cash and money. And as you get deals contracted, you market them to your investors and say, hey, I got a great deal on Bel Air Road. I'll give you my contract, I'll sign you my contract, but I need five grand for this great deal. Investor pays you your assignment fee or deposit on it, closes on deal, pays you the rest, and you've made $5,000 without any cash or credit of your own. That's it. It's about being able to establish yourself 